Every year we get to celebrate this incredible mystery of God becoming human in the person of Jesus. You know, we get so used to hearing that and knowing that that we forget what an incredible mystery it is that God could become a creature in Jesus. You know, when God created the world, God invested his presence in everything he created. As a matter of fact, if God were not present in all things, they would cease to exist. God is present in all of creation. But you know, the incarnation, God's presence in our human nature, in Jesus, was not an afterthought on the part of God. God didn't just decide, well, I think I'll become human. I'll become human in Jesus. But it was something that God had in mind all along. When God created us, when God created the human person, he created us in his image. He created us in the divine image. It doesn't seem that he created anything else. I was thinking even the angels, it doesn't tell us that the angels were created in the image of God, but we were. And so it wasn't an afterthought that Jesus would become human. It was the natural process of God's love that unfolded and expressed itself in us. When God became human in Jesus, God created himself in our image. Just as he created us in his image, now he is created in our image. But what does that mean for us? It means that the lover wanted to be completely united with the beloved. That God wanted to be as close to us as God could be in the person of Jesus. God loved us so much that he started looking like us. You know, I, I've read... Um, reports before, and I think you've heard of it, they say that people who love each other, say a married couple who have been together for years, they start looking like each other. Now don't start looking around <laughs> to see if that's true. But you start looking like the one that you love. They say even pets, People start looking like their pets, like a Boston Terrier, Golden Retriever, a Dash Hound. Now I have a horse, I have a cat, and I have three canaries. And don't tell me that I'm starting to look like a horse or a cat or a canary. But the point is that God loves us so much that he wants to be with us in our human nature to the extent that he would live like us. You know, Jesus was born in a poor family. You know, we hear that all the time. But you know, Nazareth was a dinky little town. Matter of fact, there used to be jokes about Nazareth. You know, well, what good? Could anything good come out of Nazareth? Can anything good come out of Tacoma? Tacoma. Although Bing Crosby, you know, his house is right across the street. White Christmas. So we must have something going for us. But Jesus could have been born in a palace, but he wasn't. He was born in a barn. He wanted to be so close to us, especially the poor, especially when we feel poor, 
when we feel on the margins. Jesus is there with us. Out of love, he gave himself. Why didn't, why didn't God become an angel? You know, when God became human, the angels were jealous. What about us? Well, God has a preferential option for the poor, that's why. We needed it most. We needed Jesus' presence with us more than anybody. And that's God's love for us. And not only has Jesus become human, but he also becomes human in the Eucharist. Another incredible mystery. This is my body. This is my blood. This is Jesus that we come and feed on in this Eucharist. So as we come up to receive the body and the blood of Jesus, let us give thanks to God that God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son to us. That's how much he loves us. And he died on a cross for us. No greater love can anyone have than to give his or her life to another.